Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. It is Drew here from Lone Fox and today we have another little segment of DIYing your DMs which I am super excited about because this is one of my favorite series to film here on the channel. It is basically a little mini series where you guys send me your DIY dilemmas like what do you want to know how to DIY. Maybe you have seen something on Pinterest, you've seen someone else create something, you found something in an inspo photo. You guys can DM them to me. I typically ask over on Instagram so if you are not already make sure to follow me on Instagram. It is Lone Fox Home. I'll put it on the screen right here. And I just finished creating all four projects in this video and honestly guys the projects in here turned out incredible I am so freaking excited for you to see all four of these projects um, But if you are not already make sure to subscribe to my channel I post brand new videos here on Lone Fox and you can become a part of the Lone Fox family by clicking that subscribe button Turning on the bell next to it that way you're notified when I upload brand new videos But before jumping into but before jumping into today's projects I'm super excited to announce that we have a sponsor for DIYing your DMs today and it is native which is super exciting Exciting because I've actually used their products multiple times in the past. I have one of their toothpastes as well. They have multiple different products if you guys didn't know, but I feel like they're most widely known for their deodorants. And first of all, how aesthetic are these deodorants? I've been using these for probably about almost two months now. And I personally think that it is super important to take care of your body with the best ingredients possible. Um, and a lot of conventional deodorants that you purchase actually have aluminum in them, which end up clogging your sweat glands, which is just not good for your body. And that's why Native is honestly amazing because their products are vegan, cruelty-free, paraben-free, aluminum-free, and sulfate-free. So they have all those free they're free of all those things that we don't need in our body. And they contain a lot of incredible ingredients that you guys are definitely gonna know, such as coconut oil and shea butter. So this is my personal native build your own deodorant pack, which is amazing. You get three deodorants in the pack, and I ended up choosing the eucalyptus and mint, citrus and herbal musk, and then coconut and vanilla scent. I think my favorite is probably the citrus and herbal musk. That's just the one that I've been gravitating towards the most lately. It just smells perfect if i had to use one deodorant ever like it would be this one for sure the build your own deodorant pack is normally 30 dollars, but you can actually get 33 percent off using code lonefox20 at checkout click the link in the description box below head over build your own deodorant pack so i think i should take advantage of this i have been loving these products and i'm going to be continuing using them for sure thank you so much native but let's get into these projects because they are so good all right so lone fox family member jenna a mac q23 that's a beefy username um she sent in this project that i think is so cute it's like this little it's actually sold by wylo and grove so i'd like to see oh my gosh the retail price of this is 220 pounds i'm pretty sure it's like 260 dollars i'm shook we are going to be creating this for literally like seven dollars so let's go ahead and do this this is what it looks like i'm obsessed with it it's like an abstract circular wall art piece she also sent in this larger version which i don't even want to know how much that costs because i feel like that probably costs like a thousand pounds and let's get started with that because it's super cute for the first project, we're going to be using these six inch embroidery hoops. I bought a pack of 12 on Amazon and I also grabbed some yarns for my stash. And what we're going to do is pull out the center ring of the embroidery hoop because we're going to be using these center sections as the actual base of our little wall art piece and just set aside the outside rings. I'm going to try to use those later in a future project. So how we're going to start this off is by taking a little bit of yarn, gluing it down to the center point of the ring, and you're going to wrap a couple of times to start. And as you continue wrapping, as you could probably like tell, you're going to have have the yarn start falling off the edges. So what I suggest doing is actually add a little bit of hot glue to the top and the bottom as you wrap. That way, as you wrap it, it kind of has something to adhere to and it's not sliding down the actual edge of the ring. I also do suggest using a yarn that's on a little bit of the thicker side because I tried doing a yarn that was a little bit thinner than this and it just did not turn out as great. So I did the yellow one. I also did this white one as well. And I did a couple other colors. You're just gonna be repeating this process all the way down at these sides to create these really cool kind of abstract textured circle objects. As you get to the end, you're just gonna wanna make sure to add a lot of glue on here. Let it cool down a little bit prior to putting your fingers on top of it, um, and then just wrap it around and just do the best that you can to kind of conceal that edge. Cut off your tails, and that finishes off two of our yarn circles. This black string was the one I mentioned prior about how it was a lot thinner and it just did not look as good. So I don't suggest using a thin yarn. Definitely go for something a bit more on the thicker side. I also opted for this one that has little speckles in it, which I thought was a super cute kind of textural addition to this wall piece.
And here we have all four of our circles completely wrapped with the yarn. Then you're gonna go ahead and just lay them out however you want. I believe I followed the exact diagram that uh, was sent to me, but all you have to do is just hot glue these together. Use a strong bond hot glue like the Gorilla Sticks that I usually use and it's gonna work perfectly fine. And then once you are completely done with that, let that cure for a little while. You could hang it up on the wall and you are good to go. Our next project was sent in by Leslie Pellin, and I am obsessed with this. She sent it over, I believe this is from Urban Outfitters. I'll pop up a photo and retail price here if I could find it. We are gonna be making this for a fraction of the price, and I was really excited because I actually had all of the supplies I needed to create this in my apartment already. I tried to make my own out of materials that I did have, so let's get started. This next project is time sensitive, however, we have a lot of time at the moment. So we're gonna be using the tools on the screen or the supplies on the screen here. And how I'm gonna start off by doing this is actually lay out my cane material and then pull out the cross weave. I'm just pulling out the longest side, that way I have a long strip to work with because I'm actually going to wanna wrap this around both of our metal rings. So that way they look like they are woven into this entire project without actually having to weave them in, if that makes sense. So this is gonna be a very repetitive, kind of time sensitive process of the entire DIY. And that is just going to be wrapping the full ring in this material. And I thought this was a pretty great idea because it's actually going to match the woven cane that we're gonna be using in the base of the project anyways. So this is just going to make it look super complimentary and really nice in the end. So I'm just gonna be repeating this. And what I suggest doing is doing about 15 or 20 wraps and then adding a little strip of hot glue, wrapping it and continuing on with your process. And then of course, every now and then you are going to have to cut off and add on a new piece. That way you can continue it all the way around. So I had the largest ring done. Here is the smallest ring being completed. Once you reach the end, add a little bit of hot glue, wrap it and secure it, and then just let it dry and cut off any excess pieces. Here are two rings completely wrapped. I laid down a bit of parchment paper and added some heavy objects to my cane material. That way I could go ahead and glue down our largest ring. And you're just going to want to add a nice bead of hot glue all the way around the outside, flip it over and press it down on top of your rattan. And then just gonna cut off any of that excess. And I flipped it over and actually added a nice, like generous amount of hot glue on the backside. That way I knew everything was super secure and stuck. And you're going to then go ahead and glue down the interior ring on top of the mirror, which is the same exact size and cut off any excess rattan material that is around the outside of the largest ring, as you can see. Once that is all done, you can go ahead and glue down the mirror to the center. So I'm just adding a ton of hot glue, flipping the mirror over and just gluing it right down to the center here. And as you can see, this is already looking so much like our inspo photo. And I'm actually adding a couple of these wooden beads I already had in my stash. That way they can kind of be used as little knobs and necklaces or bracelets could be hung off of them. So just set these on top of the outermost circle, hold them for a couple of seconds, let them dry. And once they are completely dry, they're gonna act as the perfect little kind of like jewelry holder. And I had these wooden rings as well, which I used in a past project. And I believe you could just find these at the craft store in the wood section. I took a little bit of the rattan and I actually wove this ring onto the top, just kind of weaving it in and out, adding a ton of hot glue on the backside, pressing down your ending tails, and that finishes off this project. I have been seeing so many people do hydro dipping lately and I've always wanted to try it myself. And my friend Brian over at Schmood actually put out a video all on hydro dipping and I'll put a card up here for his videos because they are super incredible, very informative. But I'm going to be doing kind of like a spray paint marbled hydro dipping today. And that is because Lone Fox family member Miriam Arligard, I probably butchered that, but I'll put her name on the screen right here, sent over a message. She said, I would love to see these marble terracotta pots. And so I opened the message and they look like this. They're super cute. I'll pop up a photo for you guys. They're basically terracotta pots that have like this marbling on the outside of them. And I thought hydro dipping would be perfect to create a very similar look. And this is my first time ever doing it. And I'm obsessed with the outcome. So let me share with you guys how I made these. 
Okay, I'm really excited to share with you guys this project. I used three terracotta pots from Joann's and also an assortment of different uh, spray paints. You could choose whatever colors you want. I opted for this colorway. And what I'm starting off by doing is giving the terracotta pots a spray of the white. That way it has like a nice primed base for our marbling to go on top of. And you're just gonna wanna fill up a large plastic container. I had this one on hand literally underneath my sink, so I pulled it out and used it. You're just gonna fill it up with water and I'm going to start by spraying a lot of the white spray paint in there. Then I'm gonna go in with another color. This is like the almond color, I believe. And then I'm gonna also add a little bit of copper. And something I realized is that the closer you are to the water when you spray, the more of a marbled effect you get and the further away you are, the more that the surface is completely covered. So I do suggest spraying a little bit closer to get that design. But all you have to do to hydro dip these is literally place them down into the water and let that full like marble pattern kind of go all the way on the outside. This pot was a little bit large, so I kind of had to wiggle it around as shown here. But ideally, you're just going to want it to kind of go all the way down to the bottom. And then you can clear off any of the spray paint around it and just pull it out. And this is the marbled pot. I thought this one looked pretty good, but this next one that we're doing is going to look amazing. So as you can see, I'm spraying the spray paint pretty close to the water, which gives it a little bit more of a marbled effect. And um, the closer you get it, I just find that the more streaky it got, which I really love that look. So I grabbed our next pot, placed it down, kind of twisted it and rotated it as I dropped it into the water. Once you are done with that, just clear any of the surrounding spray paint by kind of doing this little whirlpool and then pull it up and out. And that finished off this one, which I thought this one looked really great. I love the marbling in this one and I love the colorway as well. Our last one, I opted to do a little bit of green in there and I thought the green was gonna be darker, but it was just so bright. So this one honestly was not my favorite, but I thought I would include it anyways because maybe one of you guys out there likes this one. So I added a little bit of copper in there. I added the green. I just wished the green was a lot darker. It was just a little bit too bright and like a Kelly green as opposed to an emerald green color. This is what it looked like. I actually went in and sprayed a little bit of white on top of it to conceal some of that green. And then I added a little bit of copper as well, thinking it would help, but I actually ended up going in and hydro dipping it a second time in a majority of white and copper to see if I can get rid of some of that green, but the green still kind of peeked through. However, I left it as is because I wasn't too dissatisfied with it. So um, I actually went ahead and just blotched off some of that excess water. Uh, this is just going to pop any air bubbles that got underneath the paint um, and just get off any excess water and just do this very, very lightly. Just let these dry for a couple of hours and then you can use them as plant pots. And the sun is literally creeping up right now, but our last project was sent in by Isabella Malabag. I believe that's how you pronounce her name. She sent over this little trinket dish that has a moon inside of it. And I believe that this is actually from Urban Outfitters as well. And I recreated this and I think it turned out so cute. It's also super simple and very affordable. So I feel like this is a project you can make for like your friends for a birthday party or Christmas time. You literally only need paint and clay and you are good to go. So let me share with you how I created this. For our last project, I'm starting off with a ball of clay and I'm just going to be warming this up in my hands. This is the Sculpey White Polymer Clay, if you are curious. And I actually didn't have a rolling pin, so I just used this canister from my kitchen to roll it out. And I rolled this clay out to about a quarter inch thick. You're gonna wanna have it have a little bit of thickness to it, so don't roll it too thin. And I placed this bowl over the top of it and I used my X-Acto knife to cut around the outside. I highly suggest this rather than pressing the bowl on top and using it kind of as a cookie cutter because this is going to keep the edge of your plate that you're creating super flat. So as you can see, when you pull this off, the edge of the actual clay is nice and thick and it's not condensed and pressed in. So I'm using this over the top of the lid of the same exact canister that I used to roll it out with, kind of forming it into a little bit of a dish shape and setting this aside so we can work on our next one. So I'm rolling out another quarter inch thick piece of clay as well, same exact thickness as our prior one and cutting out the same exact circle as prior. But of course we wanna make this into a moon shape. So I freehanded a moon shape on here. You can actually print one out or hand draw one prior, whatever you want to do. I just freehanded it though. Um, I thought this looked pretty good, but I did go in and cut off a little bit of excess. And then once you have that cut out, all I did was I actually squeezed the edges into the center to kind of make it a little bit more of a dish shape, if that makes sense. So it had a little bit of a lip on the edges. That way it wasn't super flat. It had a little bit of dimension to it. 
Set those on top of a baking sheet and just baked these in the oven for about 20 minutes. Just make sure to follow the directions on the clay package. And then once they are out of the oven, let them cool for about an hour. And then we can move on to painting them. But this is what it ended up looking like. They are super cute. I'm obsessed with them. So how I painted these was I actually used a majority of white paint. And then I added just a little bit of tan paint in there as well. I mixed those together and I just wanted a super, super light, almost bone tan color. And it literally, when I paint this on, it almost almost looks exactly like the clay like you cannot even see but once it dries it actually turns a little tiny bit darker than it currently is which I love the ended up color so as you can see there's a tiny shift in color from the original clay but it's nothing too crazy so I added a coat of this onto both the dish and the moon shape then I went in with the copper spray paint I used in the last project and sprayed a little bit in the lid that way I could use it as a splatter so I used a stippling brush and just soaked up a lot of that paint and then what I'm going to do is just flick it on to the top to create a speckled look which I think looks really nice with like ceramic pottery so I sprayed that on there gave it a little bit of a speckled look and just let that dry and then we're going to move on to the actual edge which was primarily a lot of coral with a little bit of this burgundy color mixed into it but you can totally opt for whatever you want I just wanted to do something similar to the inspo photo and added a little bit of white just to kind of lighten that color a bit and then I went in and very tediously painted the edge and this is why we exacto knifed it guys so as you could see this edge is nice and flat and it definitely allows us to add a nice border on there if we were to press it with the bowl it would have no edge to it so this is why we exacto knifed it to start and just go around paint that in this was actually kind of fun i actually liked doing this go all the way around and then once you're done with the actual edge of the tray we're going to add some gloss glaze this is from sculpey as well just squirt a little bit on top of each of your trays and give it a nice even coat of the gloss glaze this is just going to make sure that it's protected and sealed and it's also going to give it kind of like a finished ceramic look do it on all the edges as well. And I also suggest doing it on the underside. Also add it to the moon shape, let this dry and you are done. So that was my video for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this episode of DIYing Your DMs. And I also really want to thank Native so much for sponsoring today's video. I really, really appreciate it and absolutely love the Native products. So don't forget to check them out using the link in the description box below. And I also want to thank everyone who did DM over a project idea. I really appreciate it. Of course, I couldn't get to everything, but I'm going to try to get to everything, of course, in the future. So if you are not already, make sure to follow me over on Instagram where I do really fun polls and ask for you guys' DIY ideas. It is Lone Fox Home. Put it on the screen for you guys right there but i think that's really all have an amazing rest of your day stay safe everybody i'm still literally at my house responding to comments working on diy projects cleaning my space redecorating and just trying to like honestly stay out of large crowds and just out of public in general so yeah thank you guys so much for watching um i love you all so much and have an amazing day bye guys